Hey, it's Lisa G coming in from her cluttered kitchen. Merry Christmas, everyone. It is Christmas day. It is crappy outside, <laughs> but, at least, but, and there's also no white Christmas. Sorry guys. Um, long time, no see, uh, but I do, uh, intend to, uh, remedy that in the future. Um, hello. <laughs> Okay. Anyway, um, so we're going to remedy that in the future. Uh, I'm hoping for a lot more future content um, somehow. Um, anyway, so I wanted to show you, I know I've been seeing a lot of people showing their Black Friday presents to themselves and presents from loved ones that they got Black Friday. Uh, I only thing I really wanted, Steve asked me for what I wanted for my birthday, and I said, uh, really all I need is a 10-inch skillet and a 10-inch chef's knife um, because I've been cooking in knockoff um, chef's, well, with chef's knives that, you know, we I love my Pioneer Woman stuff. It's very good for the price, but they can't be really sharpened well and it's been starting to dull on me. Also, I've been dealing with knockoff uh, Copper Chef and other uh, skillets, and they've gotten, uh, they're a little worse for wear and tear. Uh, so that's all I really wanted. So I told Steve to go on Black Friday on the Mycin website. There was a uh, code, and so he got me a 10-inch non-stick skillet and a 10 inch chef's knife and I thought I would unbox it for you and also show you what else I got that is uh, food related. I did buy myself several things that were non-food related between Black Friday and Cyber Monday. Those items I'll just put links to in the bottom, mainly clothing and things like that, boots, things like that. So if you have any interest in a great pair of Doc Martens or some Pandora jewelry or whatever, that information will be in my notes, um, along with any information on these things, okay? So we're gonna unbox my chef's knife, my sharpening stone, that was an extra added bonus, and my 10 inch Misen non-stick skillet. It is pronounced Misen as in the French for mise en place, which means everything in its place, which means do all of your chopping, get your things out, get all your um, tools out, get everything ready to cook. So we'll start with my wonderful 10 inch mise en chef's knife. I decided I wanted the one with the blue handle. I think there was blue, silver, or black. Um, and I decided on blue. So it's cool. Not only does it slide out, it has this thing for safety, which also has on it how to use it right and care instructions. Okay. Now the thing about a chef's knife, or first of all, you hold it like this, not like this. You hold it like this, and you use it like this with your fingers under so you don't cut yourself. All right, you rock it back and forth. Um, and make sure it is heavy for its weight, you know, for its uh, weight, and that it feels good in your hand because you can give yourself um, some problem over here if it doesn't feel right. Um, that's why I'm usually nervous about ordering things like this online because you don't know how it feels. You can't go into the store and test it out and feel it out like you can with Walmart or wherever if you're going to get a knife. Um, so anyway, so hold it like this, rock it back and forth. All right. Also, if you can get your hands on, go to a, a uh, restaurant supply and get cutting gloves. 
we use those at the store so that we don't cut ourselves when we're always slicing bread or whatever. Um, they're really, really handy to have. Um, and I did. I went to a restaurant supply and bought myself a pair just so that I wouldn't cut myself uh, with my new knife. So there you go. All right, there's my knife. Now, it says what I just said, all right? Pinch the knife between your thumb and forefinger along the knife's sloped bolster and wrap your remaining fingers around the handle for better control and more comfort while cooking. See, do hand wash with warm soapy water. Dry immediately after washing and store safely with blade edge protected. Now, I'm going to put it in this nice little knife block that came with my island for right now um, until I get a sheath, a sheath for it. They did not give me a sheath for it. Um, now, it also says do not put in the dishwasher. So don't do that with any knife, actually. Any knife, anything that has wood, all right? And soak it. Do not soak the knife in water. That's right. Just rinse it under. Take a scrubby. Get the stuff off of it and dry it really well and put it and store it. Store unprotected in a drawer, which means if you're going to store it in a drawer, get a sheath for it. Okay? Anyway, so that's what... All right, so that's that. And I'm going to put it right there for right now. Now, this is a sharpening stone. Anybody who doesn't know what that is... That you wet it. Supposedly you wet it. I watched a whole video. I will try to link the video that I saw uh, from. Um, woo! Very nice and sharp. Um, from Kenji Lopez, Alf Lopez, uh, on using a stone because uh, he did a whole video a while back on how to sharpen a knife because he was starting his own knife. I guess he has a collaboration with someone where he's making knives. Um, okay, and this is what this one looks like. It's blue. Um, and I think what I'm supposed to do, oh, directions came with, oh yes, here we go. All right, it says a thousand grit, medium grit is perfect for normal knife maintenance. Help return your knife to its original sharpness. Use and care. Soak stone in water for 15 minutes before using. Keep wet while sharpening. Dry thoroughly before storing away for next use. All right. So what you do is you wet it, you soak it for 15 minutes, and then you go like this along it, the edges. Uh, certain, um, there's supposed to be a certain degree that you hold it and you go like this. I'm going to rewatch the video, in fact, now that I have a stone. And you do that when you're, you know, either when it goes dead. Well, you should do it way before it, before it's no longer uh, sharp. So when it starts to lose its edge a little bit, that's when you use it. All right, there's that. And then last but not least, my 10 inch nonstick skillet. Steve's been waiting and waiting for me to empty this box. Okay, here it is. My Nissan 10 inch nonstick skillet. Okay, got all kinds of information on the bag. Okay. Now, this one. Now, this pro says mainly things I already knew. Not to use metal, this is a nonstick skillet, so a 10 inch nonstick skillet uh, with, I guess it's DuPont nonstick, I don't know. Is it DuPont nonstick? I don't know, it doesn't say. Um, and it's got these cool like little dots in the bottom, I guess, for heat, for the heat. Um, and I knew uh, most of this. I do know, in fact, I was gonna say all of these things, all right? This is the things that you should not do with a nonstick skillet. You should not use metal utensils. Use, use uh, silicone or wood or uh, bamboo, anything like that. Anything that will not, not scratch, okay? You do not cook over high heat. 
So below 450, I will not be using it on my high burner, only on my lower burners. And do not stack pans on top. That's why my other skillets have gotten to the degree that they have. That they're not necessarily scratched up, but they're really hard to clean. Um, and I assume that's because some of the dirt has actually gotten into the into uh, into it when I guess not necessarily um, not necessarily scratches but kind of scratched and so in those little scratches I've gotten this dirt that I cannot get out even with the pink stuff or scrub daddies so I will be using a scrub daddy on this because it does not scratch and it does say use wood or silicone as I said cook at medium heat and cushion the pans when stacking, which means I'm going to be putting a uh, piece of an old rag or something in between if something sits on top of it. Cleaning instructions is um, let the pan cool before cleaning. A lot of people don't do that with nonstick skillets because they do that with uh, cast iron where you fill it with water while it's hot. That way everything just comes right off. You don't have... Um, like deglazing it, you know. Um, hand wash with warm soapy water and use a non-abrasive sponge, aka a sponge, a, a scrub daddy. Uh, then you don't shock a pan in cold water, so you don't take a really hot pan and stick it in cold water. Uh, you do not put it in the dishwasher, and you do not use metallic or abrasive sponges. I will be treating this one like gold. So there you go. There's my unboxing of my three Mison items. And I'm so happy to finally get a good skillet. It's nice and heavy. It's good and heavy, but not as heavy as a cast iron, which is lovely. Um, and it's, uh, I guess it's got drilled. Yeah, it's got little things there which they drilled in so that it's sturdy. And this doesn't, this thing doesn't, I guess it does come off. I guess this part does come off for cleaning. But it's so tough to move. Yeah, it does, but it's hard to move. Um, so that this, they put silicone here so that you can handle it when it's hot, so that you can hold it without a uh, without a pot holder, which is nice. I don't have to put something separate on it, which is good. Um, anyway, so I just wanted to show you my lovely things from Steve from the Meeson website. That was one Black Friday thing. Okay, now. This was to myself. To myself. Right. Okay, I went to Spice. I, I uh, you know, I love my Spiceology. And they had their usual Black Friday sale. I think it was 30%. It was 20% off, I think it was. And so I've been making a list of all the things I want <laughs> to buy. Uh, and I knocked a few of them off my list with this. All right, first of all, I got Anna McKenzie's Garlic Junkie and uh, Smoke Junkie because I love to make things taste like barbecue when I can't go outside. Uh, since my grill is broken, I haven't been able to go outside and grill for a while. I hope to remedy that in the springtime when I will finally buy the parts for that and either have someone come and put them on or I'll learn how to put them on um, so that I can fix that. All right, so I got those two. I've been wanting this one for a while, Purple Haze. And I didn't know this, but the in, the uh, first ingredient is beet powder, which is interesting. So it's a, veg, it's a vegetable combination, actually. It's beets and carrots, salt, chili peppers, onion, garlic, etc. cetera. Um, and they say that it is good on chicken, venison, Pork, tomatoes, popcorn, beef, cucumber, and potatoes. So I'll be trying it out on a few things. Is that one. And then Jet Tila from uh, Top Chef and uh, Guy's Grocery Games and a few other shows. He did a collaboration with Spiceology and made a set of three uh, Korean-inspired or Asian-inspired combinations which sounded very good to me. And I, so because I could get 20% off, I bought it. 
the umami punch, fiery sweet, which is a bulgogi uh, combination for marinating. Bulgogi is uh, barbecue beef in Korea. It's marinated and cooked. It's delicious. I've made bulgogi inspired things before. So I'm going to use this. I'm going to marinate some pork or some beef and cook it on a grill pan and see how it comes out. Um, and then there's this one called Sour Power, which has tamarind in it, which is a fruit from Malaysia and uh, um, Pacific, or, you know, um, Indy, Indy Pacific, like uh, Malaysia and the Philippines and whatever, all over there, they put tamarind, also Thailand, they put, ta uh, they use tamarind paste. It sort of it looks like raisins, but it's sort of somewhat sour, but also sweet. It, they use it a lot. Um, and so this says it's kimchi inspired, which I thought was interesting. So this one said it's bulgogi inspired. And then this one says it is Without the glasses, a little difficult. Something called Samjang. S-S-A-M-J-A-N-G. Samjang inspired blend. I already tasted this one. And chili peppers are the first ingredient, so Trevor Golding probably would not like it. But it's chili peppers, tamari powder, which is, tamari is Japanese soy sauce that... Tamari, I know tamari. Yeah, tamari. Um, it's a soy sauce based, uh, flavoring. And then, um, it's got honey in it for a little sweetness, toasted sesame seeds, garlic, spices, onions, and salt. So anyway, those sounded interesting to me. So I'll have any information on all of that in my notes. Um, and, um, uh, all right. And those were my Black Friday items. Um, anything else that was not food related, like my boots, my Pandora, and uh, my bare mineral stuff, all that kind of stuff that I bought Black Friday slash Cyber Monday for myself. Uh, <laughs> I will put in the notes for those who have any information, you know, any care to, to you know, find out about those kind of things. Um, but anyway, Thanks for coming in and watching my unboxing. Um, I will hopefully be uh, doing some videos showing you me using these wonderful new items. Actually, I do want to do a video on uh, how to learn how to use one of those sharpening stones for anybody who really, really wants to do their own sharpening. Uh, they used to be a professional knife sharpener in this area, and he closed up shop a couple of years ago. So... I have no place to send my knives into. So uh, it's a good thing to learn how to do, especially if you do as much cooking as I do. All right. Anyway, so uh, thanks for coming in and watching. And um, I do promise to have more content in the future. And uh, so, uh, of course, like, subscribe, Press that little bell uh, and uh, come back and visit me in Reese's Cluttered Kitchen. Bye.